Good evening, everyone, and welcome to an evening with Brett Ormrod. Super, super, super Brett, super, super Brett, super, super Brett, super Brett Ormrod. Yeah, D and G textiles in Great Harwood. Uh, I was there for eighteen months, I think it was. Uh, yeah. But they were they were quite eighteen months of. You know, people tell you works and you play, but you know, it must have been horrible. It I absolutely loved it. You know, I had a right good laugh where I used to work. They used to give me time off whenever I wanted it. And obviously, playing with uh, some non league players, East Stanley, we had a lot of ex pros from Burnley, and, uh, like Les Thompson and, and Chris Grimshaw and Brian Welsh. So, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I'd have to say, uh, why uh, at Spurs? No, I don't know why. No particular reason. We, we, it was always every time we played there, the pitch was always immaculate. It was just a very nice, just a nice round. I don't know why. It's just um, I have absolutely no, you know, real uh, <laughs> proper reason why I don't support Spurs. You know, no. I'm not particularly, I'm not particularly fond of London. Happy birthday, Steve. And yeah, you're right. That was my first goal for battle. I come on for Chris Malkin after about five minutes. I think it was a boxing day. And I have, a, I, have a, I actually have a picture of that goal. And uh, my friend from Southampton, obviously one of my best mates, was Rory Dillap. It's actually Rory Dillap in the background trying to tackle me as I scored. So, uh, yeah, I, I showed him that as soon as I moved out there. Uh, I, I think I sent him a signed photograph copy, to be honest. So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's still got it on his wall. I doubt it, like, oh. but yeah. <laughs> Being from Great Harwood and Blackburn, obviously Blackburn Rovers, but, you know, Blackburn was a second division club. So being, like, fickle like we are around here, we, we used to have a first division club as well. So I always yeah. used to like Everton. Everton was always my, my, my team that... In, in the top five, but obviously Blackburn yeah. Rovers was always just you, you could be if you, you went to watch. So yeah, yeah it'd be Everton and Blackburn really. It, we drew nil nil. It was Chesterfield. It's a massive moment because Sean Dyche, who's the now Burnley manager, was marking me. And the first thing he said to me is, "You get past me, I'll break your legs, you little shit." And I just looked <laughs> up at him and thought, "For fuck." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know he's got that he's got that curly voice of Sean Dash, hasn't he? I mean, I've, 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 yeah, I've, I've, I've speak to Sean Dash quite a lot. He's a, he's a lovely bloke now, but he scared the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> that's probably the reason I remember my debut more than the debut itself. There was more than one bust up with Brabs, To be fair, we now do it. It's not if you remember, uh, we had a team photograph and there was I, I was stood on one side and there's Marvin Bryan and there was Brabs and we was on the back row. And just before we started taking all the photos, Mar, uh, Brabs put his arm around Marv, which onto my side, which just got me thinking, I thought that's unusual because you, you usually have your hands behind, you know, you, you stand like that, uh, you know, to attention. You don't usually put your arm around people on a, on a team photo. He, he dropped a Johnny. On his shoulder, <laughs> <laughs> and he held a rubber Johnny on his shoulder, and I looked at Brad. And Brad just looked at me and gave me that eye as if to say, "Don't say anything." So I, so and and everyone, and no one, no one spotted it, uh, and it went out in the Gazette, the local paper. It, it ended up on the big on Big Brother. I remember getting up one morning on my week of six, and my fresh orange, and Johnny Vaughan had on his news thing on the Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it on and, uh, <laughs> and, Wor- and Worthington went absolutely mad because he'd have gone out to every football club, everything, and, and they hadn't spotted this, this Johnny on, on Marvin Brown's shoulder. And, um, and, and he, got us, he got us all in the gym and absolutely uh, he ripped Brabs apart and, and sent him home and suspended him and said, Look, you made us a laughing stock. So, you know, the relationship uh, was always mm. a bit. Didn't Dodgy. start off well. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I remember we we got beat at three uh, 0 at the old Springfield Park. Again, uh, Nigel Wormsy he was having a go at Brabs, and he turned around to Brabs and he said, "You're too big. You need to lose weight." And, and Brabs ripped his top off. You know what they were like? He were absolute beasts. When he was, he was, <laughs> it was like a, a Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was just, he, he was just, he just built like a brick shit house. And he just turned to Wormsy and said, "Where do you want me to lose it?" 
Uh, <laughs> it's one of them moments as, that, as young lads and you just sat there going, you don't know where to look. And, and it's like, it's my, you know, you don't want to catch anyone by line. You just look at the floor and I'm chuckling like that. And I think John Hill's, John Hill's he's punching me like that. And I have just put my head down and I thought, I can't look up. Great memories, yeah, yeah, absolutely fantastic memories. Um, because Hartlepool have beaten twice, they beat us at home early on in the season and they beat us away, and they've finished just outside the playoffs. I think we sneaked in off last day. That season, obviously, when I come back from injury, Stephen McMahon had took on. We knew we had a good team um, and stuff, but we were just, um, I don't know, it, was just, it took a long time to gel. And obviously, I think we got beat off by it. Uh, not born it's like we got beat up on at 7 0 when was the epitome where he, he nearly walked. I mean, that was still Pottie just took over as manager at Barn at that day. And it's one of them where um, it was Darren Curry scored that trick to them, they were unbelievable that day. And he beat us 7 0. That was the that was the lowest point. Uh, getting beat up over in the FA Cup as well. Remember that we got beat, we they had one chance on goal and scored, and then we spent 90 minutes peppering their goal for two. Two halves and couldn't score, and, and and that was bad enough. But then, obviously, I think Stephen Moore wasn't getting on with Owen, or you know, something about a dryer or a washing machine, <laughs> uh, which was irrelevant anyway, because we had to take our own kit home and wash it anyway. So, <laughs> you know, we, we knew we had a good team, and we knew the nucleus was there for whatever reason, it just wasn't gelling. And then, when it did, just after Christmas, uh, we went on an absolute super run and we started playing football that we knew we could play. And, and we, we were a good team. And I think if we'd have started that earlier on in the season, I think we'd have got an automatic. I don't think we'd have gone through playoffs because no. we beat Cardiff. We beat Cardiff. We got beat off Brighton. We, we drew with Brighton at home. We battered them, couldn't score. That was a nap up all night because my, el- my eldest lad, he's 20 old now, was born. And he was born and I've, I, I haven't slept for 36 hours. Uh, came and played in a game because my mum had a rug in my and, and there was all the maternity leave then. I'd... Um, the team at Law rang me and he said, I said, yeah, I've had a son. He said, congratulations. I said, yeah, I'm like the 36 service. I don't care. You better be here tonight to play in Brighton. So I had to go. Uh, and it was also when the petrol uh, strikes were on, so there's hardly any petrol. Um, so I'm, I think I had to hitch out at 65. Um, <laughs> you know, things you, things you have to do. Then. It was frightening to play a football match. Um, but yeah, we it called it the, the dark days. So when, you know, and we beat Bourne on the uh, last day to get to get in the playoffs and they got relegated. So it just you showed, did, yeah. you know, yeah. so it How it turned that, around. Yeah, unbelievable. And, um, you know, the thing is, when we play well, we, we could beat anyone. And we, we could beat, not just beat teams, we could batter teams. You know, um, yeah. we, we had we had so many talented footballers. We did go on to better things. You know, Richie Wellens and all that. I know Richie's not massively popular with a Blackpool fan, but yeah. Richie Wellens got one of the most talented players I've ever played with. You know, he had everything. I mean, he was, he was a typical cocky little man when he came in from Manchester United <laughs> and stuff, but what a player, you know. He was yeah. one of them players. Player. He's one of them players that if I made a run, he could sit, you know, he'd spot you without even lifting his head. He, he was, a, and he went, on, he went on to have a, a great career, you know, and played a lot higher and, and stuff, and probably could have played, you know, Premier League, probably should have yeah. done. Um, yeah. But yeah, when it all went together and, and it culminated with, with, with the final at Leighton Orient, you know, we, it was it was such a, a because we knew we always knew we had that we were good enough. But it yes. was you know it, 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 it was frustrating because it took that long. I remember that because we just kicked off and we went one 0 down after about thirty seconds. Ball went back to Phil Barnes and he slipped and they had nicked in and scored. I just remember Don Murphy looking at me and going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we had this build up, you know, we, we got all this way and after 30 seconds, yes. back, Barnes just took the, you know, he's, he's had a worse touch than New Yorkshire Ripper, hasn't he? He's like, fuck it. <laughs> and he fell over. I'm sorry. Fell over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, he fell over, so... And the, and the lad nicked in and scored. I just remember him uh, looking at me, and and it was like, oh, oh, you know, what we got? It's a final. It's like, you know, what? But it, it did. We went behind twice, but it was one of the finals that we just. It's a bit like the 2010. You, we just, you just had a feeling. We just yeah. knew we would get the ball. We knew we were going to score. We knew we were good enough. We knew we were in good form. 
and and we knew if we you know we we played our stuff we we'd, we'd win the game mm. and and we did yeah. and, and that's how it turned out. You big easy come up uh, from a corner yeah. and, that's and then that's Brian right. Reed. You should see Reedy really with, really with that because it weren't easy. He is it, a defender and went in, so it, it was easy to set to Reedy. That weren't your goal, I and mean, obviously big Scotsman Black is he, he got on one, but because he was Scotch, you couldn't understand what he was saying. So he just <laughs> but, uh, it was easy to put me. Like, it's not your goal, Reedy. It's an OG, OG. It was, it was actually all right to be honest because it was Gary Megson who signed me in '97, and we were flying. You know, we had Andy Priest, we had James Quinn, we had Tony Ellis, uh, Mick Mellon in midfield, we had, you know, Phil Clarkson. Uh, we had a really good team, Mark Bonner, uh, scoring off the top of my head, uh, Lee Philpott, uh, centre-half, David Linigan, um, Andy Barlow, left back, Marvin Bryan, right back. So, you know, we had um, a really, really established team. We missed out on playoffs. I think it was a next month last day of the season. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. I only had made a few sub appearances, but I was absolutely delighted. You know, joining Blackpool as soon as I came in. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of them places, perhaps, you know, we, we, we had a real, there was a really good uh, team spirit and, and good players. So, um, yeah, it was it was the season after when Nigel Worthington came in, <coughs> excuse me, and... Blackpool started to sell a lot of the players, the high-profile players that left us, you know, we, we a lot of kids, you know, we had we, we had Phil Clarkson who was experienced, but the majority of us, John Hills would come back in, but was me, I was only a young lad, Adam Nolan was even younger, probably the youngest lad, I think, to score for Blackpool, <laughs> you know, and we had so many young lads, um, Junior Bent, we had one or two like Junior Bent who'd come in and, and stuff, but that majority of that team was a very, very young team, if you remember. Phil Thompson, mm. uh, Phil Barnes are coming from Rotherham. They paid hundred grand, you know. Yeah. And, you know, he, he had one figure missing, and, and uh, yes. he used to, I remember McKennigan used to say to him, "Fucking hell, Barnes, we've we spent that, we spent hundred grand on a goalkeeper, and he's only got nine and a half fucking fingers." So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, we, we we had a very we had a very young team and and um, a very you know so a, a young dressing room and 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 when we weren't doing so well it, it was it was it was hard really it was hard because lads you know were weren't really used to being in the spotlight and, but there's no choice uh, you grow very very it's a grow very very quickly. My peg used to have uh, Sammy Matthews was here and wrote on above it. It's powerful, you know. It's, you wash your own kit, you do your stuff. I mean, and I remember when we got to the Premier League uh, and, and at Squires, and I, and I came in and for the first time ever, we had a team of, of uh, uh, women bleaching, they were clean and everything. This is where we're at Premier League. And I said to Matt Williams, I went, let me guess, the the assessors are in for training ground, aren't they? And he went, yeah. I went, you can't fucking, I said, you can't wash away fucking 30 years of neglect like a better fucking get out of and jiff. The place is been to be for 30 fucking years. Yeah, what are you going to do? And you think they're going to pass it? You know, they just want something. So, yeah. Oh, God. No, that was part of part of being at Blackpool. You know, the facilities were never, were never brilliant. You just got on with it. The one thing what you've got with Blackpool is that you've got a lot of people who've lost their way. You, 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 never, you never got big time players at Blackpool because A, I used to not pay them enough to come anyway. And, and, and B, you know, it was players who've lost their way or players who'd, you know, who, who, you know, after a second chance or, you know, wanting to prove yourself. Uh, so you, what you did get, you got a really good group of lads. And, and every time I've been at Blackpool, you always had, you never got to players. You got lads who were willing to, to dig in for the course. You had to be or else you wouldn't last at Blackpool. It just, that environment, you know, any big time players got, they were like, fuck off. We're not, mm. You know, you ain't running around, you ain't doing the job that everyone else expected to be doing. You ain't here. So it sort of policed itself in that regard. Two of, the, two of the best, you know, squads I've ever been in have been Blackpool. Really, really. I mean, the, the 2010 squad, we, we, have, we have a WhatsApp right now. We still speak now, you know. Uh, yeah, you still keep in touch with them all. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it, um, you know, we all, 
Um, like Evo, Evo's obviously manager of Bolton now, so you know, I've congratulating him last night and stuff. But yeah, we still were uh, born. It's David Von Bertie today, a little alien. So I've put that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I'm right, not, so. Uh, Happy so, birthday, so, <laughs> yeah, he was a great player, David Vaughan, though, wasn't he? He really was something special. I, 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 uh, I, I lived in Hilton in Southampton for six months. Uh, but funnily enough, we, me, me and my wife at the time, we, we, had, we only had me, me, who's my eldest son now, he's only a baby. And we'd literally moved into an house and we hadn't even unpacked. We'd only been in it three months. Uh, and I went down. I went down south for talks, and ended up signing a four and a half year deal. So, and we were for Blackburn. So that phone call telling me, Mrs. You don't need to. You don't need to pack because the, the room we're on. We still pack. You know, we had rooms where we were still up unpacked. Um, wow. So, so I, I was. I was in the hotel. And I got three booklets, and they were like that thick. They were the Bible thing. <laughs> um, three volume one, two and three. And I've still got them. Um, and they're all comments from from the internet, and uh, oh, I read them. Yeah, and it, and it, it does. It, it makes you short. I can read them now, and it would have me in tears. Um, yeah. Oh, honestly. But, but there's three oh, volumes. I've been in there. But, yeah, they're they're in there. I've got them, I've got them stored away. Uh, oh, but there was there was, oh. there was three big volumes of them, and it was just I was just reading, and it was just page after page after page, and it was. It was like wow! I'm just it was it um it was very I, I, I did read them and it was um it's as like I say I've still got them now they're, they're, uh, oh, they're packed that's... safely away. Yeah, I mean I had four great years there. Um, well, I had three great years there until I and left, and then uh, uh, well, Red now has a different story. But um, yeah. I, I, had, I had three good years there. Uh, the problem with Southampton is that I was never a regular. It, it took me a long time to, to appreciate that that level and to, to think that I belonged, if you will. You know, I mean, I remember going out, uh, being on the sub bench at Old Trafford, the first, one of the first games like Man United, and, you know, there were 67 fouls, and uh, we got beat 6-0. Uh, uh, Van der Sloot <laughs> scored an hat-trick. Uh, and I remember I sat on the bench looking over and Beckham and, Beckham and Scott, um, Giggs on the, on the bench and thinking, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? It was it was surreal. Um, yeah, I can imagine. And, and, and very early into my South Africa career, I played a reserve. I meant to play against Liverpool, and I played a reserve game against Watford, and I scored early doors, and I, I ended up uh, tearing my medial ligament in my knee. Um, mm. So I was out for quite a few months, uh, and then I didn't make my full debut until um, it switched away, which I actually scored to get for it. Uh, scored on my debut. We won three uh, one, but I was having a lot of problems with me still, and I had to have them cortisone injections. You remember them? Which oh, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not very. Um, I was having them in many. I used to have. I used to put this tape on my knee that actually helped, but I couldn't really. It was like every time I got a shot off, it was like someone hitting my knee with an hammer. And stuff, so mm, I, mm. I, I, kept, I kept having these cortisone injections, and uh, and you know, I, I just I, it just never felt right, it just never felt right until the, the following season. My first season there was after I would scored, and it had you know, it started off really well and stuff. It, it, it sort of, yeah, it was it was more by by my medial ligament, and and then the second season where I ended up having my best season there, where we had the best season ever. I didn't really play for the first few games. Marion, it was only because Marion Pahals, who was one of the best players I've played with, Marion, unbelievable. He got injured where, where I really got an opportunity. I think what they did, what, what they did is they, they put me as a, this centre forward, and I, I've never been an out and out centre forward. You know, no. I've scored in things that I, I started off as a midfielder and a centre forward and, and stuff. And yeah, I started scoring goals, but if you if you look back, it was, I've always, I mean, I've always set more up than I scored in that season. That we got to, to FA Cup final, we qualified. We finished eighth, which were our best ever position then, and we we, we qualified for Europe. I I actually had more assists. I had double more assists than anyone else in that team that year, and I still right. only played. 30, I'd only played thirty one games out of the forty, uh, the thirty eight I think it were. Or you know, so Fabrice Fernandez was our winger, and I had twice as many as assists as him in that right. season. Well, that's when you didn't yeah, really go. Yeah, you were never really the centre forward at Blackpool, were you? I mean, it was John Murphy no. who was the centre forward, and yeah. you were just. 
Yeah, Murph used to be the main man, and I used to go around him, but I used to go wide, I used to go, you know. Yeah, I, you were I, everywhere. That was my game, but like even at Aki Stanley, I had spells where you go through them spells, and I did anyway, where everything I hit just went in. At Blackpool, especially the second half of the season, uh, the, yeah. the start of the, when we got promoted, and then that second half, it was, no. it was, you know, I was coming home to my missus and going, I'm just going after thinking, I don't even know how I've done that myself. You know? <laughs> And I, 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 I watched that again and I still watch it now and think, is that me? You know. Um, <laughs> one of my best friends is uh, from, obviously, I was at school him and I took him down. He's a farmer and he doesn't like football. You know, even when I scored, I scored the, uh, against um, Cardiff and he, he won't come to the game. I asked him to come to Wembley, he won't come to Wembley. And uh, his neighbour come running out to him and said like he was mowing his lawn and said oh your mate scored and he's like so what I said if you were in my body I'd chuck my window you know <laughs> me um, so I, we actually beat Norwich in a cup game and uh, on the on the Saturday and uh, I took him out to TGI Fridays where all players used to meet and I introduced him to Matt Letizia and he said to him he shook his hand and went um, do you play football <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to turn around. I went to Matt Lutz's. I went, to him, he's not taking piss. He's just a farmer. He <laughs> he's not interested in football. But and at night, they were, they were like, you know, they were arm in arm, buying a few pints. So, and it's only about three years ago. I was with my other friend, Tony Bentham, and, and my mate Phil. And we used to go to, uh, we were in Richton in, in a local pub. And we were just having a few a few pints. And it's only about three years ago on Soccer Saturday. You know, and Tizzy's on Soccer Saturday. So I could see my mate, he's looking at the, the, the telly, he's like, like, you know, like, you can tell he's, when he's thinking, you can hear him. He's that <laughs> fit. So I'm kicking my other, I'm, t- I'm kicking my other mate, Tony Bevel on the table, and I'm like, watch this, I'm like, what's up here? And he's like, where do I know him from? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, and I went that's what the tears are like, man, when you come down to Southampton, like, you know, years ago, it, we, we went out for a drink with him, and he's like, oh, yeah, he went, He's a good lad, him. He went, he bought me a few pints. You know, but <laughs> to this day, he doesn't realise who Matt Lutters is. I absolutely love it. I, I do, um, you know, we get together at Christmas, we have a few uh, drinks. And we've got Mark Atkins, Kevin Gallagher. They're all Abbott Rovers, you know, they're all Abbott Rovers with them as a kid. And so they might, you know, and it's yeah. surreal for me. I, I love the whole... I love the whole uh, thing of it. So uh, oh, it, keeps it, saying, it, it shows really, really in your commentary. You know, it shows oh, yeah. in your commentary that you, know, that you do love it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we used to go in and, and like some of the lads would come in. <coughs> excuse me. Um, some lads who were new and they'd have notes and notes of, 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 of like you've done all these notes, and I just go off the cuff. I just go <laughs> like, and I can be talking sometimes, and I look at Dan Jewel and I'm managing like stop me, just take over me because I don't know where you know you're, like, you're talking, and I think. Forgot what I'm on about, you know. In my head, <laughs> so I, I'm like that to that girl, like off thing, like <laughs> take me, take me off. <laughs> and and that, that just cuts in, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like you know. It sounds even, like it's even, great fun. Even I don't know what I'm on about sometimes. Yeah, I absolutely loved it at Forest. Um, I thought that um, I always loved as a kid. Um, uh, with Bradcliffe and stuff. It was one of them clubs that if you'd have asked me as a 10-year-old who I wanted to play for, Nottingham Forest was one of them. And uh, to get an opportunity to play at Nottingham Forest um, and to get promotion with him was uh, absolutely, you know, we, we beat you over on the last day of the season to get promoted. Um, I think we only lost, I came in, I think we only lost one in about 14. We so we got automatic Um but it's a big club. It's the history about Nottingham Forest, you know, and and uh, the, the people you meet. I mean, uh, if I um I went to Hong Kong with the Forest vets, and and I'm sat with Neil Webb and, and Des Walker and Kenny Birds and and stuff. Wow. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I'm sat there like a kid, and I'm just asking them about Brian Clough, and I'm literally like that. And I'm just, you know, I'm absolutely in awe, um, you know, um, I'm just. And Kenny Burns, Kenny Burns, what a lovely ball. You know, you're talking double European Cup in it and, and stuff. And, and, I, and I'm like a little school kid around them. Des Walker, I'm like, you know, because he was just a real and, and, and But the whole club is, 
when you walk into Nottingham Forest, it's as it's something about that football ground. You know, yeah. it, it, it speaks it just, in history as well. It, it oozes history. It oozes history. And I, and I spent, um, I was at the series in, which was just the role I spent about. Uh, I think I was at Forest for four months. And, that, and I used to walk into, I used to go on a uh, Thursday to Nando's after training on my own. And uh, I think the girl got, you know, she used to have me in regular table. And I, I'm sure he used to think, this lad, he comes in on his own. It's a shame. He's always on his own, this lad. He's, you know, he's right alone. Right, and you know, he is your usual <laughs> and stuff. But it, 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 I loved it at Nottingham. It, it was, it's, it, it's a proper, fo- you know, it's a massive football club. I, it, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud to say that, that, that uh, I'm lucky to say that, uh, you know, I managed to, to play for him. The thing is, is that, um, we, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky in that sense that, um, you know, I always got on the press of Blackpool fans, and I know there's fans, and I know the history and all that. Uh, I'm a Blackburn lad. It works in Burnley, you know, um, and stuff, and, and, I'm, and I'm very appreciative, and I know that, you know, I had three years at Preston, most of them were injury, but the lads, Paul McKenna, he's one of my best friends, uh, who was, you know, captain of Preston for a long, long time. But I played against Kent since we were kids and stuff, so uh, it, it's, you know, I, I enjoyed my time at Preston, you know, the lads and all that. But, you know, if you ask, Blackpool was always my club, my special club that, every, you know, I had two yeah. unbelievable spells at. But Preston was, I, I enjoyed my time there. And, and uh, I know that I know the, the, the rally and stuff. And I once had a mate who controversially was in one at Nick's up north. And uh, he, he asked me to come up and do a talk to, to, to help his, uh, his parole. <laughs> so I went up there and it was full of uh, Preston and Blackpool fans. And straight away they were shouting and they're like, who do you like best and all that. But the, the only way I could defuse the situation was, oh, as long as you're not a dingle, I couldn't give a shit. Uh, said, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> I'm a black man, and I'm a black man fan, so you know, if you're yeah. black and black, brilliant. As long as you're not a dingle, then that's all right. I mean, that's so I think, fine. That... Playing in the playoff final, the, the, the FA Cup, yeah. don't get me wrong, I wanted everyone as a kid, you dream, you know, watching on a Saturday in the 80s. I can name every cup final from 83 when United uh, Brighton. I remember being a kid, you know, it was the FA Cup was a, a massive game yes. every Saturday to build up to it. Um, and that was as a kid, that was the game you wanted to play, to play in. Getting the opportunity to do that in 2001 was unbelievable. Um, the difference was uh, A, we didn't win it, which, and I never touched that trophy and I should have touched it. Don't know why I didn't mm. touch it to this day. I walked past it and I just felt I didn't deserve to touch it. We got beat off Arsenal one though. And uh, mm. and I think why didn't I touch that fucking trophy, you dick? Um but <laughs> yeah. uh yeah, it, it's and, and it was at the Millennium. Don't get me wrong, the Millennium Stadium's an unbelievable stadium, but it wasn't Wembley. No. You know what I mean? And, and the good thing is when we when I went back when I thought I'd missed my chance, you know, play a final in two thousand and one with Black and yeah. Lenore, it was at Millennium. And, and it's, but it's not Wembley, you know, as a kid you wanted to play at Wembley. So mm. um, I ended up going back to Wembley four times, twice with Wrexham and twice with Blackpool after that. And obviously, but mm. um, yeah, to go back and, and to score that and then get that winning really feeling in, in, and, and, and to change history really, because Blackpool had never played in the Premier, it was something new, wasn't it? And, yeah, and we've been in the top division for 40 years, Brett. It was like, it, it was incredible, you know, journey back I, from, you know, from 1970, so. Yeah, and everything was in the first half. All that action was in the first half. So, you know, I didn't know it was going to end up the no. winning goal. No, you didn't know uh, it was the winning goal at the time, no. Uh, but the second half when I come off, I just remember me, I was walking around the changing room. I was, I couldn't sit still. I couldn't watch the game. Uh, I wasn't nervous until I came off. Uh, I was absolutely fine playing in the game and all that. I was I was focused and everything. And as soon as I came off, I was, I couldn't, I couldn't watch the game. And I remember I Billy Clark coming in and out telling me the score. And it was only when the final whistle went that I actually come out of the dressing room because I was that nervous. I can honestly say I've never played a game when I thought we ain't going to lose this. And we were shaking their hands before the game and I didn't even... And usually you, you look... And I had one look at them. And I never shook anyone's hand after because I thought, fuck them. That's, that's the mentality we're... And it's horrible now. It's horrible because I, I'm, I'm not that kind of... But 
I've never been as geared up in my life to, to and so single minded. And when we went one nil, we it's if you go one nil down, your automatic thing it's like oh, you're disappointed. And, um, but we was in that we won at ten out of the last eleven games to get, <laughs> and and we've been behind pretty much in every game. So we had our mindset, and it's never been before, and it's never been since. Uh, that just get the fucking ball because we knew we were going to score, yes. and it was. And, and I've never been in a mindset like that. It was absolute. And that game, we went behind twice, and, and not one of us panicked. And we looked at each other. We get the fucking ball. We knew we were going to score. And it we was knew exactly it. And the I, same for us, because I, I mean, I remember arriving at Wembley and walking around the perimeter of the stadium before the, the game and looking at these Cardiff fans, and I'm thinking, what are they even doing here? This is our day. Yeah. I just didn't yeah. couldn't comprehend what they were doing there. You just knew, didn't you? It was amazing that mentality. It was, and and it, and it came over all, and all the way. You know, he, he he put that belief in us, and, and you know, I remember uh, Bishop. Is it Bishop Abbey? Uh, East England used to uh, train there. Uh, we played yeah. there the day before, and, and we had a five side and, and stuff. And, and Chaz was just practicing free kicks, and he put one right in the stanch. And I went, get the fucking bus ticket and save them for tomorrow, like you know. Just, <laughs> I, and then he's gone in, and then he's gone in the best free kick, probably one of the best free kicks in any final you'll ever see. I know, you know it was unbelievable. I, if you look how far he is out, and Marshall's a top quality keeper, and he. And he's a big lad, and he gets nowhere near it. It, it. To get it up and down, and to it, it hit it like he did. And we were just, and then he went. We we had him. I mean, we were bashing him. And then he went against runner play and scored again. And it was just get the ball, get the ball. You know, <laughs> we know. And, and it sounds weird, and, and because since you know you're always getting and you get and you, it's, it's a human. It's a very human emotion to score. You can't. It's a natural emotion to be score. You, you know, you, you let yourself down, but we weren't in that because we'd done it so many times to the run up and got in. You know, every time I think we went one nil behind and we come back and we just knew we were going to score, we knew we were going to win. And and it wasn't confidence; it was just confidence. But it was great collective confidence. Yeah. You know, and we, you know, uh, and we knew if 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 we weren't at it, you know, keep sort of just purposely have a bad touch and smash some fucker and and then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as an excuse to stand up to everyone and go fucking come on and you're like when Keith said that you ever hate you know <laughs> you are scary yeah so that's it so it, it, was, it was like oh born you know and we had so many unbelievable unbelievable and, and we just knew we were just I just knew we weren't going to lose that final and I look back at it now and I'm a bit not shaking the rounds he's he's, he's thinking but <laughs> I was like, these, I was 33 then, so I'm like, these fuckers are trying to stop me getting back in the Premier League. That was my mindset. Yes, you of know, course. Yeah. I, I, you know, I've come back to a club and I've had one of the best seasons I've had in a long time. A, a career that I thought when I came back to Blackpool was on the decline and, you know, probably going to peter out. And I've had one of the best seasons in my life in the Championship at 33. Second top goal scorer. And I'm, I could be back in the fucking Premiership. I couldn't look yeah. at them. I didn't want to know. Fuck off. You're going to ruin my dream. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that, and, and that's what it was like. That was that was what it was yeah. like. It's like, no, you ain't fucking. So when we won, why was he shaking hands? Like, fuck him. No, no, no. <laughs> and then it, and it wasn't until and I did sleep that night. We went to the casino. My missus and kids went to bed. And I remember coming coming in about five in the morning and just staring at the ceiling, staring at the ceiling until my my little one got up at seven, and then we just went for breakfast. I remember Maul and played it to me, and I missed it. And I was on the floor, and um, someone else played it back, got back across, and I, I got to my feet, but the ball was going past, and I thrown with some of it and missed it. I made myself look a dick on match it day, which, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I haven't been reminded of all my friends or anything like that. Um, <laughs> and then, and I played the first few games, and obviously, like we were obviously bringing like Luke Vardy signed and. And we we signed Matty Phillips and, and, and up and I mean what you've got to remember I was 34 then so you know and I'm playing the best league in the world so I was sort of and I was sort of you know I didn't have that pace that I had and and stuff and and you do start to uh, I, obviously I wanted to play but uh, and I remember scoring a goal at Fulham and Eddie and it was given offside. Oh. Uh, 
if you remember, we got beat. We yeah, drew to all. Yeah, we drew to all at home, and I scored. I scored a fucking great. Honestly, I, I edit, as soon as I edited, it, it went bullet in top corner, and the linesman gave it offside. Oh, and it was, I vaguely remember that one, but and then I was like, and then obviously I was on the bench a few times, and then I wasn't in the squad and stuff, and, and everyone was going, "You need to get this goal. You need to get this goal." And uh, it got to the point where I was, I wasn't involved, but I could see this. Uh, lads would be training up pitching people would be saying to me like are you going to score his goal today and I'd be like well no because I'm not in the squad that sounds stub with you uh, if um, I were I'd be, I'd be up pitch warming up <laughs> uh, you know so and they were like oh you need to score it and I'm like well there's nothing I can do and it, and it did it did start to because uh, play on my mind a bit um, but I, I was just at the thing that if it's going to happen it's going to happen it, I think it was what is it to me it was um, I remember coming on a sub uh, I played a reserve game against Blackburn and scored a couple of goals. Uh, and I've been in the squad for ages and all the way and put me in the squad. And it was also my ex-manager, Red and that, who I didn't get on with. So I'm thinking, yeah. So I came on and we were 2 And I remember Matty Phillips running inside and the left back, uh, the Cameroonian left back, is it a cotter? Let's a cotter or something. And I just gambled on it. I just thought, he, he nicked in and took the ball off Matty Phillips. And I'm just thinking, he's gonna, he ain't going to clear it. Like, any, any show that I've just gambled on him taking a touch. So I went to his right, and he just, he did, he had a touch, and he just put it right in my path. So I just knocked it in. And, he, and as soon as it went in, and I, and I slid on my knees, and it was just all the relief. I think if you ever see photos of that, you can see the relief in your face and everything. And yeah. um, stuff. Because to that, if I'm absolutely totally honest, that was my pinnacle going to battle. Yes. I thought, that was... That was, it weren't yeah. getting any better than that. I was 34. That was, you know, that whole situation. That was me. That was summing my career up. That was, it'll never get any that better. That was the yeah. moment. I don't know. There's a, a, there's a few that I, I did all right. I scored a few goals, didn't I? Uh, no. There's yeah. one, I, I remember one coming on against Bristol Rovers when I was a kid at uh, Bristol. Stuart Week and uh, Will Irvington and, and I smashed his top bike and I, I, can, I can picture it now. Uh, I went up for an header and it bounced on the uh, yard and I hit it and I, it, I pinged in his top bike. We won 2 0, I think they low, low scored scored um, the other one. There's goals mm-hmm. like that, so, and there's, there's, I have a lot of fond memories of goals. The two, the, on Sky, when we beat uh, Newport and I dinked the keeper twice. Um, oh, yes, 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 you did dink the two keeper. Two different yeah. times, I just kept dinking. I went for a spot, a spot where I, I, I scored two at Mansfield, exactly the same. I just went for a spot where I was going through and I'm thinking, I'm not, I did it at a party when I was retired. And I scored about 10 goals in the keepers and I thought, I'm not going to shoot. I'm just going to try and dink the keeper. Uh, and I used to go through it in my head and I'd go through and I'd go to shoot and I'd just dink it. <laughs> and I did it against Salford. <laughs> I scored a great one against Salford, shoot the keeper, uh, dink the keeper. I just went through things where in my head I'm just thinking, I'm not going to fucking shoot. I'm through here. I'm just going to dink it. We was in the tunnel, and uh, one of their lads, as I'm walking out, one of their lads had grabbed me, smashed me head against the wall, right, punched me in the face, right, and grabbed me in an headlock, right, <laughs> just with my walking out, right, and gone, you fucking score today, this is our turn and all that. So the whole tunnel kicked off. We kicked off uh, at one game. I, I had my back to him, I was walking out, and he's just... Gr- I remember he uppercutting me, he's like, crack me head. And that, and he's like, I'll fucking break your leg and all this, this is our day and all this. And that. so I'm like, fuck it, like, I think Big John Murphy, Big John Murphy grabbed him with thing, and I'm jumping over my shoulder trying to punch the fucker. Um, so it all, it, all, it all kicked off like that. Um, oh, my rubbish thing don't swear, it's all right, I can swear. It's, it's all right, yeah, it's, 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 uh, so, um, it's the watershed, you're all right, it's not for kids. All right, it's just that my nephew's watching, that's why he's doing that. Um, <laughs> well, time to go to bed. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, Ryan, if you're watching, go to bed. Um, <laughs> uh, what is it? So, yeah, so it, it kicked off, and then um, uh, the second leg, he, um, so, I mean, we, sh- we should have beat him anyway. There's one I've gone through, and uh, he, he, he asked me down about three times. He actually got a penalty. He actually nearly snapped me in half. Uh, so we played, we played Newport, and I've been ill. Uh, and the mom saying, well, you've got to play, you've got to play. Now, I've, been on, I've literally been on my sick bed for three days before we played that game. And uh, 
it was a wet and wet, horrible ground. The pitch was muddy as hell. Obviously, Sky turned up. They only turned up because they expect to shot off. Yes, of uh, course. You know, and stuff. And, um, and yeah, they were just... So, so to beat them 4-1 was satisfying. It was like, nah, fuck off. You know, they were horrible. <laughs> well, this one, but I think they have it. And the away leg, yeah, uh, where he's, he's trying to like that, uh, and I just, I just elbow him in chest, and he goes down. Uh, probably gets sent off nowadays. Uh, but yeah, dude, that's what they were like. And then after the game, he's like, "Well, all right," and I'm like, "Fuck off, dickhead!" Like, you know, like, oh, you punched me back ever, and what? Looking in a tunnel, you know, it's like, yeah, that's not, yeah. that's not intimidating. Yeah, that's just being, a, you know, being a knob. Yeah, it's being a knob. Yeah, oh. totally. Yeah. From memory, when I first signed, it was Vicky Oyston in charge, and she didn't want to do it, so she made Carl do it. And Carl was just, you know, he treat, he treated, he was ruthless. And I, and I also believe if you if you run a football club like Carl Oyston did, uh, uh, you know, nine hundred ninety nine times out of a thousand, you'd end up in conference, and we nearly did. Yes. But he got he got lucky. He got very lucky because he had good lads and and. and Thingy and he had lads who, like I said, they were they were always paid. If you played in League One, you got paid league wages. That's Blackpool. That's why you know um, so many people have left that football club for whatever reason and stuff. And mm. that and um, he was the problem. He was the yeah, problem. Yeah, he was. And, and I, I always said, I, you know what? And and I don't know. You can ask Keith Sub in this at the playoff final, do at night, uh, and we were on about me and Keith were in the chat. When, uh, when everything, we were at the do and we were steering and all that. And I said, it'll be interested now. I said, because if we ever get relegated, right, it's, because Carl always said, it, it's, you know, I remember my mom, if you pay, you pay money extra and you can get get a player in, you know, it was always, if you remember them days. Yes, uh, yes, I do remember uh, well. that's, when, that's, when I, that's when I broke. Like, I said, it'll be the first time since I've been at the football club in, in spells, where the club has generated its own money. Right. You know, it's not the Oyston's money. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see if we go back down with these parachute payments, because I, I said, I know him. He will not want to, he wants to take everything back to what it were. But it's gone yes. to a point where, it's gone to a point now where fans won't accept that because mm. it's not his money anymore. They always took it on face value, that all right, it's his money. And you can understand that he'll put so much into a certain extent, but the yeah. money they got back was far outweighed the money they put in. Oh, absolutely, yeah, hundred percent. You know, so and I said to Keith, if we ever go down, whatever happens from now on, it's a game changer now. And you can ask Keith. So when I said that to him on that night, I said yeah. um, because it's not the clubs, it's not his money anymore. It's the clubs. It's the actual football club has generated that money. And, yeah, uh, and you saw the problems that, it caused by them doing yeah, that as well. That, that's why all the way left, you know, he disheartened all the way for everything all the way had done. And I know they said this and that, and all the way stuck up for him, which people do. And that, you know, Carl, Carl's Carl, you, you had to know Carl. I mean, Owen, Owen was, Owen used to make me laugh. I mean, Owen I was always, a genuine Blackpool fan, he was. He was, but he, he said to me once, um, <laughs> he said to and, and Owen, and, and, and you know, I always got on with Owen, I mean, whatever he think, but he, he said to me once, he said, yeah. Do you know what, Brett? He said, I'd name one of my dogs after you. And I went, all oh, right. Uh, and I, went, oh, I, I said, I don't, I don't know to take that off. <laughs> I, I went, is that a compliment? Is that a compliment? And not anyway, I don't know, it's a compliment. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's one of them. But, but Carl, Carl, Carl was just a businessman and, and he looked at it as a business thing and... And and he shouldn't have done. And the problem, the, the the thing is with Carl is that he never did a good thing when he got it, and he didn't realise, you know, the the amount of good people and the good, the thing that we out meaning to he had. Yes. But he will he will turn round the call and say, "Well, I've had three promotions," and he can't argue with that. But he's had three promotions, not by him. If anything, no. he was a hindrance. He was a hindrance. It was a hindrance rather than a help. When I was at Southampton, the chairman had always been with a manager and come in and uh, meet the players and talk with the players and that. I never seen yeah. Carl Oyster at that thing going eight and a half yeah. years at four and two spells I was there. And he wasn't a football fan. So, mm. you know, you can't, it, it, he, was, he was a businessman.
Uh, well, I've got a theory. Uh, and my theory is that um, if you remember at that time, there was ITV Digital that had gone bust. And a lot of clubs had spent that money and it never came, did it? Yeah. And I think, and I think Carl, you might, I might be wrong in this, but I'm sure Carl said, well, if we went for Brett's money, we'd have gone on there. But he never fucking spent the money anyway, because he never, he never spent money anyway. No, he never so, spent a penny. <laughs> so, so I think it, I think, I think it phantomly went on the so-called phantom bill that we had, but we never did. Like Burnley, I think Burnley and all that. If you remember, it's quite a big thing. A lot of clubs were like, he put a lot of clubs in a lot of shit. Um, and they nearly went, and they nearly went bust. And I think uh, ours was uh, a phantom one. It was unbelievable. I, I, we didn't really. It was we had we had black uh, warm up tops, and we had to send for the white ones because someone went out in a black one and nearly burnt to death. Um, <laughs> it holds heat, doesn't it? Uh, I just remember half time. Every, my my temples were. We I was I had. I'd stuffed, we had an, an eye thing and I'd stuffed them with eyes. We had wet towels on. Everyone had just had the same and, and no one spoke and all the way we were just giving his team talk because it was so hot. It was ridiculously hot. I think it, it was 106 at one point, wasn't it? It was 106, yeah. It, 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 it even showed it on the, on the... It's probably the hottest I've ever been in any game I've ever played in. Um, and the occasion. I mean, remember when we walked out and they put them flamethrowers on. Yeah, they'd be house as well. And I said to Fletcher, I'm going to fucking eyebrow still here because I felt the gun. <laughs> it, was, it was hot, but this heat come on. It was like, it fucking just melted. But like him off in the gun at the end, you know, when he melts. <laughs> the story behind that, right, is that <laughs> we were doing it for Brian House, which is yes, the, uh, the charity, the, yeah. The, Believable course, and, and it's for we're terminally little kids basically, you know, with the parents, and, and there's nothing they could do for them. And, and stuff. so, we decided to do this calendar, and then it's another thing that all is absolutely brilliant. So, um, I said, Right, we'll do a calendar, we'll do it on movie things, uh, on film things, and that. So, we did it at Funny Girls, so you know, the, the, so yeah, and we had, if you look at the card, it's brilliant. Yeah, it uh, is. We, we all did two. I think I did one Men in Black with me and Jason Ewell. And then the second one was meant to be a bug's life. <laughs> uh, and I got there late. So we're in funny girls. I got there late because uh, I finished training last. That day, I forgot to put my boxes on, so I haven't packed any underwear, right? So then we've got to put black of stuff on. Then got, so I'm the only one with his pink shit on. Right? There's, <laughs> there's obviously in funny girls the campus people you can ever meet, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm sulking from the start off, and then I have to sit on this mushroom. And this fucking mushroom wouldn't stop. If you sat on it, it just kept spinning round. <laughs> so, and it wouldn't stop spinning round. And the photographer starts getting iffy with me, so I'm getting fucking iffy with him, and he's going, can you keep it still? So, uh, I mean, fletching all that, they're all in positions with the crouch down, so they're, so they're starting moaning at me. So everyone's <laughs> moaning at me for this fucking mushroom. <laughs> so it took about an hour longer than it should have done. So by the time... Oh, no. I did I, that that was all I could smile. Uh, when it stopped, when I got it, managed to get it stopped and all that, and it gone on, and I was getting shit. I wasn't in any mood. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I went to Soccer AM and they put the hat on. It was on uh, Soccer AM, I remember. Yeah, I was going to tell. <laughs> and the photographer just went smile, and I and I said through my tear, I went fuck off, and just set the. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> And he looked at it and he went, well, you still want some money? He went, but it's the best one we've had in three hours. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. I mean, I'm still waiting, hopefully, when all this COVID madness is over. Uh, I'm going to get a minibus with my mates and we're going to come down and uh, we're going to have a, um, an afternoon in the in the Jimmy Armfield Club. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely honoured. Uh, I've, I've seen the artwork on it, which looks amazing. Uh, one twenty four would look a bit bigger than. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. It looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. like I said, I, I can't. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm yeah, it, it's that's why I'm, I'm going to bring the course all of them down. We're going to have a few beers. We're going to have an afternoon down there. Uh, so hopefully, it'll be a, a good one. But yeah, oh, unbelievable. That'd be great. Just that'd be honest. great day. It's a funny story, this, and it's a true story. When I broke my leg uh, in uh, 99, I used to go in the gym 
I, I used to have to be first one in. Baz shut used to moan because he had to take me in. But I, and uh, I used to go in the gym, and Jimmy Hartfield would be always on the um, the exercise bike. And I didn't know who we were. I'd go in the gym, and then I, I, just in the for two or three hours, he'd start telling me these stories about how he played against Pelly and all this. And I'd be like, I go to Baz on way home. I go, this guy's fucking gym. He's winding me up. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing against Garincia and all this, all the <laughs> three Olympians. And I'm like, fuck it. Right, and all that. And he, I went, he's, he's, he's proper winding me up. Like, he's, he's taking piss out of me. He's, he's telling me, like, that he's, he's played for England and all this. And I'm like, that, is it? I'm like, well, if he has, why is he doing in the fucking shed at Squires Gate with me? You know, and uh, <laughs> then I went to like, uh, Jimmy Arthur, and then I asked me that, and I was like, ah. And then I went, I was like, oh my God. Oh, you know, yeah. Amazing. So that, about two months, he's telling me these stories, and I would sit and listen to it, obviously. But I thought he was, I thought we were winding me up. But some of the stories he was telling me, you know, Bobby Robson and all that, uh, Bobby Charlton, and, and um, you know, I got I was just like the 62 World Cup, which Garincia, as a kid, I was like, leaving it. So Garincia, I mean, Jairzinho in '97, I grew up watching Brazil teams, uh, like, right? Uh, black and white deals. Uh, I was like, if you know, I used to. Before Google and all that, uh, no one really knew who Grinchu were, and that, and he he pretty much won Brazil the the, the tournament in Chile too, which Jimmy Arnfield played him. He's telling me this game when he played him, so I'm like, fucking, and he said, good. So I I'm like, what? You know, uh, Amazing. I look back now and go, fucking oh, hell. I remember going to Lewis show, and and there's a big article on Jimmy Arnfield. And I'm on wheels and like, fucking him! It's actually him! For five months, I thought this guy was taking piss out of me. You know, he's just part of the England 66 World Cup squad. It uh, has to be big, John Murph. Me and Murph at that time, um, just for, you know, just for, and, and Paul Simpson as well, Simor. Uh, mm-hmm. On that left wing, with me and Murph uh, playing up front, just because it was we were very selfless partners. If one we were in a, a better position, we play each other in, and it stemmed from when he first signed from Chester, and we were having a circle, and it was youngest in, and some and one it younger than us, and then it were like it come to me and him, and it was like, well, how old are you? I mean, we're 22, 22. Well, what what year were you born? 76, 76. Well, what month? October, October. Well, what fucking day? 18, 18. So we were both up the same fucking day, same year, same month. So I was like, what, what time? <laughs> I went, well, I don't know. I have to ring my mum. I can't fucking remember what time. <laughs> um, so, and, and that was that was when he first signed. That was the first day time. And, uh, and obviously I broke my leg, so the thingy, but uh, as a proper, you know, like a natural partnership that you just played off and, and you knew each other what you were doing. Uh, you have to be big enough. We, we, you know, and it was such a dry... Like Ben Burgess, Ben Burgess is the same. The two people, the, the big, big set of forwards, but they're so dry and they just have me in stitches. I couldn't, I like Ben the other day on radio said so and I was doing this family game. I, he just has me in stitches, but I'm a big nurse like that. I never looked back in my career until I, I, I retired, and, and it's because I, I just thought, you know, you can always, you know, just keep going as long as you can and see what happens. And, I look back now and I think it, it's all a highlight, you know, I, I got to do something that I always wanted to do. It's not many people get to do it. I played in games and, 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 and for football clubs that I could never imagined. Um, I had a lot of ups and downs, it is ups and downs and, and stuff. And, uh, and, I, and I do look at it and think, wow, well, there's, uh, there's, there's still times when I look at it and think, has that really happened to me? You know, you pinch yourself and say, is that really... Did that really yeah. happen to me? As if you didn't uh, realise how good it was yeah. when you were in it. Yeah, and 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 because it was it was I, I, I always you know even when I went back to Blackpool thirty three I didn't want to you know I, I never wanted to look back because I just wanted to keep going and going and going and, and just see see where it took me and now I look back now and I, and it, it's it's I'm very very proud and very humbled and to be able to do a job that everyone wants to do everyone talks about. Everyone's, you know what I mean. Everyone's appreciative, and it's. I feel, I feel very humbled and very privileged um, because it's all everyone wanted to do as a kid. Uh, when I look back at 
at 18, I was I fell out football for I did a double earning operation. I thought I was football for a bit. I ended up going to Aki Stanley because a mate of my dad's uh, knew a, a play a, a, a coach and said, get him down there. I was, you know, and and I never really looked back from there. And, and I went to Aki Stanley and met ex pros who were who gave me my confidence back, and it went from there. And I think, wow, it's a scruffy kid from Blackburn. I don't know, like, you know what I mean. There's always kind of look back and think. What if, what if, what if, what if, but mm. I, can always, I always give it my best. If I'm totally honest, I, when we went back in 2010, I didn't think the standard was as good as what it were when I played at Southampton, you know, the United's and your Arsenal's weren't as, as what they, they were, but it, it, it is what it is, the Premier League, it's a massive circus and for Blackpool to be, I mean, everyone, the best thing about it is that everyone loved watching Blackpool. Everyone enjoyed that. I mean, that season, uh, we went down on, uh, you know, I think we're the highest goal scorers ever to get relegated. We went down yeah. on one point where Brian Walnor, all right, he's uh, not letting his dad now, but I remember him being on that soccer thing, he's saying we won't win a corner. Yes, you know, I everyone to say to fail. And, and we, we took a game as it comes, and, 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 you know, it was only to the end where it's you know where I think lads probably lost a bit of confidence, but we we just had that not naivety, but just, we just wanted to play football, and we had fans who backed us regardless, you know. And, yeah. um, and it, was and it, it, it was magical. It, it was magical. Yeah, we would become everyone's second favourite team, didn't we? Um, yeah. And, and, you know, and it was just a go, and that ground was packed week in week out, and you know, I mean, everyone made a weekend of Blackpool, didn't they? They're coming up from yeah. London. The they other, did. The other weekend, you know, and stuff. And even when we play Blackburn, all my mates who are Blackburn fans, you know, we all saw them that weekend, um, <laughs> you know. And and, it, and it, to be part of that uh, was was absolutely magical. It's, it, uh, you know, it would have been nice if we'd have, if we'd have beat West Ham and gone back up. Uh, we should have beaten them. We would have better team on the day. Uh, and, and, and it could have carried on that way if it wasn't to be. But, you know, who knows? <laughs> got a good squad I think he's putting together a really good squad I know Chris Maxwell I have a Rex and me and Maxi I've spoken they absolutely love Neil Critchley you know he says he's an unbelievable coach and, and I think you know given time I think that that, that team will I definitely think they'll, um, they'll get into the championship uh, Medine when he came back he wasn't uh, obviously fit Yates was um, struggling a bit because he was playing out on the right. I don't think Critchley probably knew his best team, but he sort of put them together. If you saw in goals, they're probably the best partnership in that league. There's not many partnerships in that league anymore, is there? It's, you know, everyone's gone with the 4-3-3 and stuff. So, uh, mm. but, but again, you've got a team there. I mean, uh, CJ Hamilton's obviously injured. They've, they've suffered a lot of injuries, uh, but, yeah. uh, but he's... He, he's, he's got a, a he's got a quality. He's got a squad full of really good quality footballers, and, and mm. don't have because you know they've been a bit naive when they first came into the league. You've got a lot of lads who you know and they're getting a bit of criticism, but I do believe they've got the core of that that team uh, are good enough to get them out of that league. I really do. Um, um, they showed that when they played West Brom. They showed that when they played Brighton. That yeah. you know they, they, when when you can rub shoulders with them, they can play football. As good as them, I think they struggled against the lesser teams who were a bit horrible, you know, or a bit more long ball or a bit more in your face and stuff. I think, uh, but that comes with experience, that, and I think he's got yeah. a lot of players who, who are still learning the, you know, proper proper football, if you will. They come from under twenty threes and stuff, and they're learning what yeah. it's like to play in the football league. Yeah, fine, fine. All right, well, that's actually better. We're not getting that that noise that we were getting before. You were uh, telling us a story about what Chris Maxwell was saying. Oh, yeah, um, you know, and he said, like, the, the way Neil Critchley goes about, you know, the training and everything that, uh, behind the scenes and that, it, it makes him feel that the previous 15 years he's done is absolutely wrong. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and I've heard that a few times off people. You know, he's very highly recommended. He's still learning as a manager, you know. Yeah. It's his first real big job. Um, and I think given time, uh, you know, I think it's exciting times for Blackpool, I really do. It was brilliant watching Manchester Day when we were top of the league, and it was like, 
this is it, right? Blackpool is top of the Prem. Um, <laughs> you know, take, Photoshop that. Photoshop yeah. that and, and, you know, print that out and, and get it, what is it, uh, laminated and stick it on your wall. One game, Blackpool top of the Prem. And, uh, yeah, I mean... It might, I don't know how long it might take till they ever get there again, but I can honestly say I played in the team that we were top of the frame after one game. So. <laughs> and I've never been taught. I played at Southampton for four years and we were never taught. Uh, no. So. I'm, I'm very humble. When I come to Blackpool, it, it's nice because when I live in Blackburn, I mean, I, I said to people in Blackpool, I wish my kids felt the same that you not do. Because, um, yeah. yeah. you know, it's uh, here I'm just bright and scruffy and... Yeah, I'm just the dad and stuff. So it is. It, it's. I still. Do you know what? I still find it very humbling and stuff because I think if if people feel like that, then I've done something right. If they feel like that about me is the way I felt about players when I was a kid, um, then yeah, I've done something right in life. That's for sure. Yeah. Anybody who watches this channel will know because uh, I'm asking it loads of times. Who's my favourite Blackpool player? And you are my favourite Blackpool oh, player. Thank so, you there, very so, much so there you are. You are of all time. There's, you are top of the tree for me. Thank I just love. I, I just love the way you play. I, I I love the way you chased every ball to the. You know, to the. Sometimes you got balls back that you, you should never have. You know, you just, you had no right to get to that byline to get to him, and it's just the way you played. I just adored you. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> Stephen Roberts says, we'll never forget all you did for us on the pitch. We owe you so much, Brett. You really are one of the greats. You've earned your place alongside Sir Jimmy Arnfield and Sir Stanley Matthews and Morty. So there you are. Wow, that is, that, is, that is that is that that's as good as you it gets, what? Brett, honestly. I, my mate actually texted me and went to do us a thing about that. And you come like, I think I come third or fourth. And I'm like, and I'm shaking my head going, wow. Because, I mean, you, you're mentioning names there that, uh, yeah. you know, they, they've, they've, they play for England. You know, they've been absolutely... Uh, and it, it's yeah, it, it, it's I, I can't. I can't I'm, it, it doesn't compute because I'm not. I'm not. I'm too thick to realise. You know, <laughs> I, I'm not thick to realise. But it, it's it, it's um, yeah. It, I, I don't. It's I, I have no humble. words. I don't know what to say. I, I really don't no. know. But I'm I'm incredibly humbled and grateful. That's all I can say. Well, well, there's lots of people coming in here. John Scott said, "I didn't think it was possible for Oh My God to be even more of a hero." But after tonight, he is. He is absolutely amazing interview. So there you are. Thank you very much. Cheers. Uh, what's this? <laughs> Anthony Bentham is saying, could you apologize to, to Brett from the Balti house for making his curry so spicy on his, oh, on his last visit? Is this a funny story that we need to know? Yeah. Well, that is my mate, Tony Bentham. I'm telling you, I was in the pub kicking my other mate. Right? All right. He okay. him purposely. Um, yeah. He, um, <laughs> He, he's, we went for a curry and I don't like, I have a tea for my soul, but I don't really like spicy curries. And uh, I was doing really real anxious. So obviously he rung me up and said, right, we're all here waiting. What do you want? So I told him and he asked for it extra hot. So I was, <laughs> through, I was like, and I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm crap with it. I was, uh, I was sucking ice cubes for about 20 minutes. He ruined my food basically, but it's one of my best friends. So he's texting in, he told me to fuck off, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. That's why I started playing again up until COVID. I started playing for Darwin Betts and uh, and a seven. I have a, a, a seven side team at Ivory Sports. I ended up started playing um, and stuff. Um, I did play for about two years and I just started playing again. But obviously, you know, my body doesn't do what my mind thinks. I still think I can, I'm I'm 21 again and I can run. <laughs> The argument when I, when I played that I wasn't going to coach, but obviously me and John Hills took over foul for a bit, and um, and I really enjoyed it. I, I you know we had some great lads there. We won a few games and stuff, and it was only temporary until they got a new manager in. And uh, but it re I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, uh, just the day to day, back in the just training with the lads again, and, and I was joining in and that and stuff, and, uh, and just the crack with lads and that. And I absolutely loved it. And um, yeah, if the opportunity ever came around for any, you know, thing, yeah, um, if you'd have asked me before that experience, I'd have probably gone, no, no, you know, that's me. But no, um, after that experience at Foul, that it was so good. And uh, yeah, you know, we had such a good time. And, and like I said, it was just a day to day with the lads. And we had, I just, I, I loved everything about it. So oh, yeah, well. I'd never say never. <laughs> 
Yeah. I don't know if you were superstitious, but your dad was superstitious, oh, oh and he would never ever watch you play on TV. He listened. Oh. Is it right? He listened to the to the playoff final on the radio. He would only yeah. ever listen on the radio. Yeah. What was yeah. the re What was that reason? Did he watch you on TV one time and you didn't play well or something? He never said. No, no. I, I took him to FA. Cup. I got him to go FA Cup final and we got beat. Um, but he used to listen to Radio Lancashire with his cousins yes. on a Saturday. Yes. And you, you couldn't go in and 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 you know thingy. He was. He was adamant. He's and I, and I were. I had my old superstitions. If I ever played well um, in a shirt and tie, I would wear that shirt and tie until I had a bad game. Or I remember once <laughs> travelling to Bloomfield and there was an accident on fifty five, and I had to go all the way around the Audis, around Preston, and all that to get to Bloomfield. And I had a really good game, scored hat trick. So for about three weeks, I travelled that way, even though it was <laughs> way out of my way. Uh, <laughs> simply because, so yeah, I was a bit superstitious, but my dad was. Ah. And, uh, I got into the cup final and we got beat. So the playoff final I said, Do you want to come? And he just went, No. So I didn't know you. He said, I'll get me calm. We've got the radio on. I'll be fine. Uh, and we won. So he was yeah. right. That's yeah. Really... And they helped John Hills. John Hills, who uh, obviously had one of my best mates in football, he had, he had uh, some DPD franchises. So I did a bit of driving for him. Uh, oh. Which was a bit surreal, really, because I did run Leyland and that. And I'm, I remember a Preston fan, I opened the door and a Preston fan said to me, he went, you're brought on, aren't you? And I was like, and you used to have to get him to sign for something. And I went, yeah, I said, just help me, mate, like, on days, you know, keep me busy. He went, I've been after your signature for three years, and now you want mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, just started, I just started laughing. Uh, so I, I did that, but now I, I just help him, like, like, look after the vans and stuff for him and stuff. So I, I pretty much just... Do as little. I just, I'll just bodge about. I'll, I'll, I keep myself busy, but um, yeah, I just, I do different things. I, I'm a bit of a uh, odd job man, if you will. I went to St Kitts. St Kitts was the first tournament we went after I broke, come back from a broken leg. Uh, we won that. Um, what is it at St Kitts? Um, that was the first time when I. I did play the first game. I played the second game against what they call. I can't remember, but uh, and first touch I had, someone smashed me right on my leg, right on my leg um, where I broke it, and mm -hmm. I, I got up, and it was like that was the best thing that probably could have happened to me because it was like I it, it was firing, and I was like, oh, give me the confidence to think, yeah, my legs all right now. But yeah, I did, I did go to Latvia. We had we had a mid-season trip. Um, we iced them. Uh, we we all the way to Latvia when DJ first signed. So I didn't go on pre-season to Latvia, but we did go on mid-season like, and stuff. And that was, yeah, that was eye-opening. Yeah. What was it like playing with DJ Campbell? Because he was a, he was a, he was a character, wasn't he? Yeah. He, do, do, do you know what? D, sorry. <laughs> poor fellow. Uh, DJ was brilliant. Um, it was just part of that squad. You know, we had, so, we had such a tight-knit bond. Um, you know, he'd obviously come the pre-season before, uh, it came me and Charlie coming on loan on the Tony Parks, if you remember, mm. and stuff. So, you know, it, it, uh, it wasn't when he came back in, it was just like, you know, like it's like your brother coming back, or something, you know, a part of your family. It, yeah. when, he, when he re signed, it was, it was, it was just like, it was just natural. It was just meant to be. It was like, oh, you've been missing, now you're back. And, you, you know, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he played his best. Everyone played the best stuff because we had, like I said, we have we have such a tight group. Well, I had to because I had to understand cranes and and you know I've been oh, yeah. with cranes. Me, me and cranes first met each other at Southampton. He came to Southampton. Then we were both at Leeds, ah. uh, and, and then uh, at Blackpool. So I know cranes better than anyone. And when him and his missus used to like talk to each other, I could be sat there like. I mean, they might as well talk French. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what they're on about. So I just thought, I'd like, like a tennis match, I'd be just looking at one to the other as they, they had a go at each other. I'd be like, well, talking. I'm like, I'm, I'm not, a clue. not a clue. I, I, I wouldn't say regret because, uh, you know, I missed the penalty on my league's debut um, and, and split my head open and, and 40,000 Yorkshiremen not like me. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I still go to Leeds now, and people remind me of that. Like, you know, it's like, oh, all right, mate. Yeah, it's, um, but it's not regret because I always give it my best, and I think if you always try your best, whatever happens, you, you know, um, 
it's different nowadays. It, there's a lot of pressure on players nowadays because Twitter were coming in later on, you know, and and I think you I, I look now and, and and there's a lot of abuse on social media. That's a big thing now and yes. It's like having a personal phone call to you, you know. No one mm. no one goes out to play have a bad game and no one goes out to miss a chance. That's football. And if you don't yes. like your team losing, then don't be a football fan because that's what football you know, you take you, you two teams, professional teams, professional players going at each other, and one's going to win sometimes, one's going to lose. One's going to lose, yeah. You know, cool. and that's football. And if you don't like it, then don't watch it. Yeah. You know, and if no, you're a player, you like, if a player has a bad game or makes a mistake, then so be it. You know, they're on the they're on the threshold. They're playing against the best players around. That's why they make mistakes. Yeah. If there were no mistakes, there'd be no football, you know, there'd be no goals. And if you don't like it, then don't watch it. You know, you're not you a know what, that's, that, that's so true, Brett. Honestly, you know that's, I mean? a, and, that's and, a lesson for us all, really. When is, we yeah. all... I mean, all the way it used to be big on that. He used to say, like, you know, like, he wants, you know, if a plumber, he used to get comments like, well, if I didn't do my job, I wouldn't get paid. Well, if you're a plumber and you're putting piping you know, up, you haven't got another plumber trying to rip it off and put his own up. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's all the way used to explain it. And, and it is. <laughs> you, know, you're against, you know, you're not playing against dog and duck. You're playing against other professional athletes who their yes. fans want them to win, like you want your team to win. Yes, you know and it's exactly. Tough, and you can't both win. It's a, it's a tough thing. It's up the threshold of 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 what it is, and and that's why everyone loves it, and that's why you get results. What are results? And if you don't like it, and you want to abuse people, then don't watch it. Don't be a football fan. I learned a long time ago that you, you just can't enjoy football. So, you, I mean, for me, I just make a day of it. I find a nice pub, yeah. go for the weekend or whatever. You can't make it about the football because it's it's too painful half the time. Well, of course it is. That's what it is. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, it, I think you took Man United fans when you've gone through this thing. A lot of Man United fans, because a lot of Man United fans didn't support Man United or weren't born in the 80s when Liverpool were winning everything. So weren't used to it. I mean, you watch them things on YouTube, the Arsenal fans going on about, you know, they cracks me up that these Arsenal fans, like they've got a gob given right to win everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, you, right? you that's haven't. When, that's when they have to take a step back and, and be hounded Arsene Wenger out and say they were the good days because of what Arsene Wenger created. Oh, no, it was unbelievable. Wasn't hasn't got a gob given right to win anything. No. You know what I mean? So you've we know gotta, exactly what you mean. You've got to take things in perspective and and stuff. And if you don't like your team losing, if you don't like a player making a mistake, then don't go and watch it. Simple. Don't watch it because, you know, my mates used to come and watch me play on a sat Saturday and say, well, you should have done this, should have done that. And I go and watch them playing for dog and duck on a Sunday and they couldn't pass water. <laughs> <laughs> they kick ball out of play and they'd be clapping. I'd be like, mate, if I did that, I'd be getting booed. You know I mean? yeah, exactly. Yeah. They'd be telling me exactly what I should have done. <laughs> so I'll be like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, exactly that, right. That's football. Everyone's got an opinion. Yeah, all right. Yeah. But if you if you're gonna give people abuse and you don't like it, then don't watch it. Simple. That's, yeah. that's my opinion anyway. Um, Four Fillers says, I've never sat and listened to such a down-to-earth, fun and interesting bloke. I will forever worship the ground, the grass you walk on from Phil in Teesside. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers. I appreciate that. Brett, honestly, it has been amazing uh it's just been an amazing night i hope i hope oh, everybody you, you, you know that's been watching this and uh, people will be watching this as well on the rerun and if you have uh you know just just like this video uh because i want to do more of these and I, you know if i can get more ex players coming i hope you've had a good night brett oh, and you've enjoyed it oh, you know brilliant. we want who, do, who who's, who's on our hit list that we want on we want to uh, we our want gtf we'd like on <laughs> uh we would like Craney on would like um, DJ Campbell. DJ Campbell on if we yeah. could. So we need lots of likes on this video, folks. So if we get lots of likes, then I can get back well, to Brett. I'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it to the lads on group. I'll chuck it on. I'll get. I'll get. Probably get Keith over. I'll probably get uh, Gary Taylor Fletcher. He'll probably do. Oh it. yeah. Stuff, so. Evo, if we can. Well, I know he's busy at the moment. Obviously, he's running a football club. But oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Brett. You've been amazing, as, oh, as, you, as you always much. have been amazing for us. Thank you very much. I've really enjoyed it. We're, we're going to let our audience uh, give you a big cheer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big thank you from everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Brett, or Sir Brett Ormrod, who he is. Much.
Uh, thank you very much, Brett. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go. Let me just go to the closing when I find it. Our closing credits, and we shall get off, and we'll let you go and enjoy your beers, enjoy your night. And uh, it's just been honestly, Brett. It's been one of the highlights uh, of, oh, of everything we've done on YouTube. It's amazing. You're an absolute superstar. 